The iconic Burj Khalifa, untold story of engineering marvel. The Burj Khalifa is the tallest building in the world and a global icon, truly a feat of engineering. The building represents the conceptual heart and soul of the city of Dubai. At 828 meters tall, this magnificent structure is located next to Dubai Mall and has drawn visitors from all over the world since opening in 2010. The unmatched Burj Khalifa view can be taken in from not one but two observation decks. The two-story at the top on the 124th and 125th floors, as well as one of the world's highest observation decks, peaked at 555 meters on the 148th floor. More than six years in the making, the project was a massive undertaking that paired bold vision with a brave leap into the engineering unknown. Making it happen needed design and engineering genius. Pushing the envelope of engineering means trying new things, developing techniques, and doing a month of testing. Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill was the architecture firm behind the design and engineering of the tower. The design team developed what has become known as a spiraling Y-shaped plan, which was used to shape the structural core of the building. Key considerations included the impact of wind forces and constructability for practical construction considerations. The design employs a buttressed core, which is each wing of the building buttressing the others via a six-sided central core. It is this central core that provides the structure's torsional resistance. The design of wall and corridor intersections means that all of the vertical concrete is used to support both gravity and lateral load. As the building spirals in height, the wings are set back to provide many different floor plates. These setbacks also have the advantage of providing a different width to the tower for each differing floor plate. This stepping and shaping of the tower have the effect of disrupting the flow of the wind over the height of the building. The interior design of Burj Khalifa's public areas was done by the Chicago office of Skidmore, Owings & Merrill LLP and was led by award-winning designer Nada Andrik. It features glass, stainless steel, and polished dark stones, together with silver travertine flooring, Venetian stucco walls, handmade rugs, and stone flooring. More than 1,000 art pieces from prominent Middle Eastern and international artists adorn the Burj Khalifa and the surrounding Amar Boulevard. Many of the pieces were specially commissioned by Amar. The two main contractors for the interior fit-out were DEPA and Fino International. At one point, interior contracting specialist Deepa famously told Arabian Business Magazine that fitting the tower was a nightmare. The company won a $600 million contract to oversee the fit-out of nearly 1,000 residential and serviced apartments, corridors, and lift lobbies. Despite the challenges of moving men and materials up to as high as the 100th floor, the company got the job done in a reasonable time. Any building expert will tell you that if you want to build high, you must first dig deep, driving foundations down well below the surface. The tower's superstructure is supported by a large reinforced concrete mat, which is, in turn, supported by 192 board reinforced concrete piles. The mat is 3.7 meters thick and was constructed in four separate pores, totaling 12,500 cubic meters of concrete. Bauer Specialty Bau, with Middle East foundations, took on much of the piling work, which required bores to be sunk for cast-in situ piles to a depth of 43 meters. Known by some as the Rolls-Royce of the drill rig world, the Bauer BG40 can deliver, as the name suggests, 40 Nm of torque, of course, there isn't a situation that we could imagine where you would need such heavy power for drilling piling holes. Half of this would be sufficient for most situations. However, a reserve of torque means there is less stress put on the machine, so it can get on with what it is required to do. Around 45,000 cubic meters of concrete, weighing more than 110,000 tons, were poured for the foundations. That's equivalent to 18 Olympic-sized swimming pools with 192 piles running to a depth of over 50 meters. A high-density, low-permeability concrete was used in the foundations, as well as a cathodic protection system under the mat. This is an effort to counter the effects of the highly corrosive groundwater. Bores for the 192 deep piles were sunk in 2004. Each of them was designed to be cast in situ and, as such, needed to be very deep. Ground conditions at the Burj site were favorable. The soft but not unstable soil proved easy to dig into. Other sites in the region are not so fortunate. 
Naturally occurring limestone requires breaking with a breaker attachment first. Well, you already know that over 45,000 cubic meters of concrete were used to construct the tower's foundations. The construction process used 330,000 cubic meters of concrete and 39,000 tons of steel rebar. Laid end to end, the rebar used in the tower would extend over a quarter of a way around the world. For the tower's construction, the contractors developed a special concrete mix that was pumped to a height of more than 600 meters without segregating. Thanks to the machinery available on site, the concrete could be worked on for more than three hours before hardening took place. This allowed for a shorter construction time and gives the building a longer useful life, making it more sustainable. In November 2007, the highest reinforced concrete core walls were made using concrete pumped from ground level to a vertical height of 601 meters. This broke the previous pumping record for a building of 470 meters on the Taipei 101 and the previous overall world record for vertical pumping of 532 meters for an extension to the Riva del Garda hydroelectric power plant in 1994. The concrete pressure during pumping to this level was nearly 200 bars. When the record was set, a photo call was arranged and a distance of 601 meters was reported as the new record. However, it was discovered shortly afterward that the concrete needed to go a little further, so an extension was added to move it to 606 meters. The mix reached such astounding heights by running through a high-pressure trailer-mounted pump. The concrete required approximately 40 minutes from the filling of the hopper to its discharge from the delivery line. The concrete volume in the line amounted to approximately 11 cubic meters with this installation height, meaning there were roughly 26 tons on the pump after every piston stroke. Or, if you so like, you can equate that to five big elephants. For about 32 months, the high-pressure pump and two others delivered more than 165,000 cubic meters of high-strength concrete, which, using a preferred unit of measurement, is about 66 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Then cladding followed. The exterior cladding of Burj Khalifa began in May 2007 and was completed in September 2009. At the initial installation stage, the team progressed at the rate of about 20 to 30 panels per day and eventually achieved as many as 175 panels per day. Burj Khalifa has set a new world record for the highest installation of an aluminum and glass facade at 512 meters. The total weight of aluminum used on Burj Khalifa is equivalent to that of five A380 aircraft, and the total length of stainless steel bull nose fins is 293 times the height of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. The exterior cladding comprises reflective glazing with aluminum and textured stainless steel spandrel panels and stainless steel vertical tubular fins. Close to 26,000 glass panels, each individually hand cut, were used in the exterior cladding of the tower. Over 300 cladding specialists from China were brought in to do the work. The cladding system is designed to withstand Dubai's extreme summer heat. To further ensure its integrity, a World War II airplane engine was used for dynamic wind and water testing. And if you think you've heard enough, then hear this. The curtain wall of Burj Khalifa is equivalent to 17 soccer fields or 25 American football fields. One aspect of the construction that one may think is not important is the use of cranes, but without them, the end goal wouldn't have been achieved. They're graceful, mysterious, and, it seemed for a time, everybody's favorite topic. The high-level cranes at the Burj were always enigmatic, enshrouding the operator of the very highest unit of mystery. Stories were circulating about the Indian on top of the world, which speculated that he was paid a king's ransom and that he had been made an honorary UAE citizen. All of this was really nothing more than idle gossip. The figure had become more of a mystery man through Imar's refusal to let the media have any access to him, though this was most likely due to the developer keeping the exact height of the structure a closely guarded secret, a figure which the high-level operators undoubtedly knew. Despite this conundrum, there is quite a lot that we do know about high-level cranes. For a start, there was not one, but three Favelle Favco cranes that served right up to level 156. Given that the machines worked 24 hours for much of the project's duration, it would be safe to assume that there was a team of at least nine drivers and many other technicians to ensure safe operation. In fact, the developer recently confirmed that a 35-strong workforce was on hand to run the cranes, though this is a drop in the ocean compared to the total of 12,000 employees on the project. All in all, the construction the construction of Burj Khalifa was an international collaboration between more than 60 contracting and consulting companies worldwide. At the peak of construction, over 12,000 workers and contractors were on site every day, 
representing more than 100 nationalities. According to the developer, construction must have taken 22 million man hours. And so, at over 828 meters and more than 160 stories, Burj Khalifa holds the following records. Tallest building in the world. Tallest freestanding structure in the world. Highest number of stories in the world. Highest occupied floor in the world. The highest outdoor observation deck in the world. Elevator with the longest travel distance in the world. Tallest service elevator in the world. So, there you have it. Would you want to visit the place someday? Let us know in the comments section below. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.